Hello there guys, got the final video instalment of making a barrel today and what we're going to be doing is making the transfer port and the little liner spacers. Now I probably won't bother showing you making the liner spacers, they're really not that interesting, they're just a Delrin disc with an O-ring on the outside. But the transfer ports have a couple operations in them so I'll show them in full. I also want to clear up just one thing in the previous video. Some people were a little confused as to why we polished the liners and I really didn't give a definitive answer in my last video. So the reason we want to polish the liners is to improve accuracy. That's the main aim of polishing the liner. Once we polish the liner, get rid of all the lumps and bumps out of it, the pellet in theory should travel through the liner easier and with less chance of it picking up damage on its way out. An added benefit to polishing the liners is that we one improve efficiency as we need less effort to get the pellet down the end of the barrel obviously we need to use less air to get it moving at the same speed so we increase efficiency and number two it reduces the amount of lead fouling in the barrel there's less granules to grip the pellet as it pushes through so there's less chance of lead being caught in them little pockets and we should be able to go further without cleaning our barrels anyway that's that I hope that's clear to everyone now so we'll start making the transfer bolts. So we're over at the lathe and I've got a big piece of brass chucked up. Unfortunately this is all I had so I'm going to have to turn quite a bit off it which is a bit wasteful but it's all I had. So we face it and rough it down half a mil above the finished OD and then we've got to drill it out to 11 mil which is tapping size for M12 by 1. The hole has to be a flat bottom so I drill most of it out and then come back with a mini boring bar and just bore the last bit out. Has to be a flat bottom hole as the end of the steel joiner part locates on that base in the bottom of the transfer port. It's also what the liner butts up against. So then we countersink it and then tap it. Start the tap in the lathe, then finish it off by hand. Threads need to go all the way to the bottom, so we start with a taper tap and then finish off with a bottom in tap. Then it's ready to part off. Once all the work's done from that side, we mount it back in the lathe on a mandrel. So I've got an M12 by one mandrel in the chuck and we can finish it off from this side. Doing it this way just ensures that the OD is concentric with the threads. So we face it to final length and then turn the final OD. As we've got the turning tool in the tool post, I also do the mag boss. This is just the lo little locating nub the magazine locks onto. And then we cut the groove for the external o-ring. Nothing special about that one, it's just a 10 by 2 o-ring that goes in and no specific squeeze. So that's all the exterior features. The final thing we need to do is bore out the breech seal. So we start by drilling through and that's just with a 4.8 mil drill bit and then we can put the o-ring groove in. Now o-ring grooves are quite simple once you understand how they work. Simply put, the o-ring needs a small amount of squeeze in order for it to seal round a component. Now a good rule of thumb for o-ring squeeze is 10% of the cross section. So in this instance we're using a 4.3 by 1.5 mil o-ring so our squeeze would be 0.15 millimeters. In other words we need to make the o-ring groove 0.15 millimeters shallower than the OD of the o-ring. So for this example a 4.3 by 1.5 mm o-ring, the o-ring groove needs to be 7.15 mm in diameter and that gives us a 10% squeeze. This is very similar to FX's transfer port. When you put them side by side you can barely tell the difference between the two. Then it's just a quick deburr just with a tri-corner file and then finally we move on to the mill work. So I just transferred the mandrel straight to a collet block in the mill. I found the center and the edge using an edge finder. Then I just measured off the original transfer port to find my locations for the transfer port and the slot. Now I forgot to push record on the video camera so unfortunately I missed the little slot but it's very simple. I just used a 2 mil wide end mill and milled a 1 mil deep slot the same depth as the FX original part and then the slot you see here is the actual transfer port itself and I'm using a 3 mil wide end mill and just creating a 3.5 mil wide slot just stepping over a quarter of a mil in the y direction and just doing a couple passes to make sure everything's cleaned up nicely right so i'll bring you back to the bench and i'll show you everything together okay so here are all the components laid out we have our three barrels 
are 400, 500 and 600 barrel. Now I cheated a little bit with the 600 barrel, I already had a transfer port and a jam nut, so I didn't bother remaking them. But both the 500 and the 400 use all my components except from the liner. So I'll get you a closer look at the transfer port. I'm really happy with how it came out. It's a direct copy of the original one and it fits in the gun really nicely. The magazine fits on that boss there easily and pellets feed nice and smoothly. So I'm happy with how they came out. The other thing we made was the liner supports. Now I didn't show you making these but all they are is a Delrin disc with an O-ring on the OD. Delrin discs a press fit over the liner and then the O-ring is just a nice tight fit in the steel tube. They just work a lot better than the O-rings that the standard liners come with. I really didn't like that idea so I made something a little more sturdy. So this is our 600mm long liner and the liner supports are a real tight fit on there like so. Now just space them along the length of the liner. The joiner piece comes up to about there so we don't need to go any further back than that with the liner supports. And then to fit them in the steel tube we just push them over. I put a lot of grease around these so that they slide in nicely. But you see there, they're a nice sturdy fit. They go in there and the liner's not going to rattle about at all. And I think it's just a nicer solution. I don't know if you'd get away with it on a 2.2 or a 2.5, certainly not a 3.0. There wouldn't be enough space in the steel tube. But I think a 177 it works really well on. Now the liner's quite stiff in the steel part there. So what I had to do was make a little tool, which is just a split clamp tool, which when I tighten it up, I can take the liner out. And there we have it. Okay then, that's going to about do it. For the final thing I want to show you, what I'll do is I'll take one of these liners and we'll put it together. There's not much to it other than screwing it together, but it's always nice to see. Right, so first of all, we'll join the back pieces together. Now FX use some sort of glue to put these together. But as I take them apart quite often, what I use is just blue Loctite. Blue Loctite a small amount of heat and it will break the seal and it will enable me to take these apart maybe change the o-rings as and when I need to. And I've never had one come loose yet. So just blue Loctite on these. Just a little small amount. Up nice and tight. Then the same for the transfer port. Just want a small amount of blue Loctite. On the end there. The Loctite's just useful to stop the barrel unscrewing if you ever undo your shroud or the shroud end gets stuck on. When it's done up like this what I'll do is I'll grip the transfer port in the vise with a little bit of rub around it and then just give it that final tweak. So I'll do that now. And finally, we can put the O-ring back on. It's already got a breech seal in it. So we're all good there. Next, it's time for the liner to go back in. Now, if you've got a standard liner, you probably have O-rings around it. So you just need to put a small amount of grease around the O-rings so that they go in nice and smoothly. I also put a small amount of silicone grease on the very end of the liner just because there is an o-ring in this steel joiner part so it's always good to have a little lubrication.
and we can just push it up in all the way down. There we see the liner sticking out the end. Now if we wanted to at this stage we could index the liner. Usually when you get a liner it has a small black mark on one of these flutes and that's FX's marking from the factory that that flute needs to be at 12 o'clock or 180 degrees out from the transfer port. But since this liner doesn't have it, it's worn away, I'll leave it as it is. So we take our jam nut, put a small amount of silicone grease around the end of the liner, just so the O-rings have got a little lubrication, and we can screw it together. Now you mustn't do these up super tight. If you do them up too tight, you'll crimp the end of the liner, and it won't ever shoot straight again. So what I'd like to do is hold the tube in one hand and with the other hand put a spanner across the flats and do it up as tight as I can with my hand. When I'm at this stage I'll grip the steel joiner piece in some soft jaws in the vise and then just give it a final tweak just to make sure it's nice and tight. And that in my experience provides the right amount of compression on the liner. Right, so I've given it a little tweak in the vise and it's all nice and tight. The supports really help with the liner's stiffness and as you heard there, there's no resonation in the liner. I'm not sure how much difference them supports make but I feel with these barrels, the weakness is the liner thinness. I think they wave about a bit too much for my liking and the supports are a good compromise between having a solid barrel and having a removable liner. Right, so I'll get a rifle, put it on, and I'll show you the final shot. Right, and there it is on the rifle. So this is obviously the 400mm barrel. Short barrels fit the crown quite nicely, and I've just got the little bolita on the end there. I've still got to make a shroud for it, but that will be coming at a later date. So as you can see, in the block of the gun, transfer ports in there, and that's one of the ones I made. And the pellet probe aligns nicely with the transfer bolt, so no problems there. Also, got a magazine with one pellet in. When we put the magazine in, slides nice and easily in there. No resistance, and just locates nice and solidly. Similarly, when we push the bolt forward, there's no notchiness or grabbing from the pellet being misaligned with the transfer bolt. So I'm confident we got everything aligned properly. Okay then guys, that's going to about do it for this one. Thanks for watching. An accuracy test will be coming with these barrels. Ranges are starting to open up a bit now. So I'll be taking my camcorder to the next range session I go to. And I might get some shots. And I'll definitely be doing an accuracy test on all three of these barrels. So look forward to that. Right, that's about it from me then guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.